Hey, Church from Home Family, hope everybody's doing great tonight. I'm ready to dive into the Word of God with you. So open your Bibles to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I want to talk to you about the Word of God tonight. I want to give you some things that we should do with the Word of God. As children of God, our biblical, our foundation uh, of Christian faith is based on the Word of God. So Psalm 119 it is an amazing psalm. It's not only the longest psalm uh, in, the, or in, in the Bible, or longest book in the Bible, it's 176 verses, but it's also the psalm that deals with most directly with the topic of Scripture. Um, Virtually every verse in one way or another refers to God's word. Uh, so I want to dive into that tonight. I don't think it's there by accident. I don't think it's there um, by happenstance. I think it's intentional. And you know the way that I feel. I believe that everything in God's word is intentional. Now, who wrote this psalm? Most likely it's David is the author of, of the psalm that we're looking at tonight at Psalm 119. It uses a variety of terminology to describe God's word. It talks about the commandments. It talks about the law. It talks about the statutes. It talks about the precepts. It talks about ordinances, rules, words, testimonies, and the list goes on. But these all refer to the scriptures. They existed, these scriptures existed in David's day. So it's really the, essentially the Pentateuch is what we call the first five books of the Bible is what he's referring to. Now, Psalm, Psalm 119 is one of the best examples of scripture speaking about scripture. It is the word about the word, Psalm 119. So get that, that's your reading assignment for this week is reading Psalm 119. Some of you, it may take all seven days of the week to read the 176 verses. Some of you can read it in just a few minutes, but that's your scripture reading for this week. I pray that you sit down and read these verses. Now I'm going to jump around and I'm going to give you these verses, some verses, and then you can highlight them or whatever you want to do. But in Psalm 119, I want to talk to you about what in the world do we do with God's word. The first thing that I believe, according to the scripture, that we need to do with God's word is we need to trust the word of God. Time and time again, David expresses his belief that scriptures are true. The Bible teaches us in Psalm 119, 151, verse 151, that he has a belief that the scriptures are absolutely true. You and I should believe the word of God. We should trust the word of God, trust that it is faithful, that is true. So he trusted that scriptures were true. Verse 66 of Psalm 119, David teaches us that he believes in them. I believe in them. You know, we a lot of us say at times we believe in certain things. I believe in this or I believe in that. And reality is if you stick around somebody long enough, you're really going to find out what they really do believe. If you stick around a Christian and they say, hey, I believe the word of God, well, you're going to find out if they really believe the word of God by watching how they live. That's going to... So David really, he believed in the word of God. And in verse 42, David tells us that he trusts in the reliability of God's word. He says, I trust in their reliability. So the word of God is true we should trust it and and david says i need to believe the i'm believing the reliability of god's word so you and i need to do the very same thing if david tells us one of the greatest kings that israel has ever had a man that had many ups and downs and many bumps and bruises in, in his life and god found favor in him if he says it then then we should be listening to it and i'm telling you right now he wrote these words inspired by god so here's the reality we should trust in the reliability of God's word. It's reliable for every situation in our life. And then he goes on in verse 160, he states, the sum of your word, God, is truth. The sum, the total sum of God's word is truth. Now, trusting the word of God um, may come a little difficult for a lot, a lot of people. And, and reality is there are things in the word of God when it, you know, listen, when he says, lean not on your own understanding and in all of, all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct or guide your path. That's difficult. It's difficult to just let go of things that you want to be in control of and let God have control of those things and trust him with that. But God tells us in his word, we understand that we can trust God, that we can rely on him, that he is reliable. So the word of God, let, now let me just say something real quick before we move on. I want you to understand that God's word is the end all. 
If God's word says it, yes, it settles it. That's how God speaks to us. God speaks to us through his word. God will never give you anything to do that is contrary to the word of the living God. The first step is key. If a believer doesn't really rely or really regard the word of God as being fully inspired and trustworthy, none of the other four steps or three or four steps that I'm going to give you tonight are going to make a hill of beans. They won't, there's no reason to follow them. This is why the church of the Lord Jesus needs to be quick to deal um, with repeated criticism of the Bible. We sometimes let say, well, they just they don't believe this part of the Bible. Well, we either believe it all or we don't believe it at all. That is something that I need you to get in your heart. We've got to believe all of the word of God. It is written for all of us. It is there for us to bring, uh, get the context out of it and study it and, and, and put it down in our spirit and understand this is how God speaks to us. So trusting the word of God is the first thing that we need to do with God's word. The second thing that you and I need to do with God's word is simply study the word of God. Here we go. I always talk about it. I'm not going to stop now. Studying the word of God. David doesn't just believe the word. He doesn't just trust the word. He is a student of the word. In verse 73, he learns it, right? In verse 73, he learns it. He seeks it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Verse 155, he goes on, he learns it, he seeks it, he memorizes it. Verse 153, he regularly meditates upon the word. He studies it, he, he learns it, he seeks it, he memorizes it, he regularly meditates on the word of God. This step right here, studying the word of God, naturally has got to follow the first one. If, if you trust the word of God, then you should study the word of God. It, it's It's mind-blowing and mind-baffling to me that when someone says, I'm a Christian, why are you a Christian? Well, because the Word of God says that I can be a child of God if I repent, trust, confess, believe, right? Repent and turn away from my wicked ways and follow Him, right? Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the Bible. So, we get the very fundamental of our faith, the very foundation of our faith, salvation from the Bible. If we trust the Bible for salvation, then we should trust the Bible for everything. So we've got to believe it, and then we've got to study it. We've got to get it down in our heart. It's not just enough to talk about the Word of God. We need to study the Word of God and find out what it's saying to us, what God is saying through the Word. If God's Word is really true, then we've got to dig in and dig ourselves in there and start studying the Word of God. We've got to embrace it. We've got to embrace it with all of our mind, and we've got to embrace it with all of our heart. It's not just enough to, oh, I believe certain things about it. We've got to trust it all, and we've got to study it all. Now, I'm not going to go a whole lot into studying the Word of God because I talk about it all the time. You know it's important to study the Word of God. The third thing that we need to do is use the Word of God right? We've got to use the word of God. It's one thing to believe it, and it's another thing to know it. It's another thing to rely on the word of God, to look at it as a guide in difficult times. How, how does God want me to handle this situation? Well, let's find out what the word of God says about it. How does God want me to um, go through this storm or this, this struggle in life? Well, let me get the word of God. Let me study it. Let me find out what God's word says to me. We've got to rely on the word of God and we've got to use the word of God. The word of God, we've got to use it as a counselor. David repeatedly affirms that he uses the word of God or used the word of God in all of his life and everything that's going on. That, that God is his counselor in verse 24, right? That in verse 28, God gives him strength. In verse 50, God brings comfort and to the affliction of the heart. He states um, in verse 105 that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so in short, the word of God is the very source for the life of David. The very source for the life of David. You find that in, in Psalm 119, 156, that the source of David's life is the word of God. So it, it reminds us that there's a very important attribute of God's word. The word of God, listen, is alive. 
It's active. It's living. It's powerful. It, it the it's powerful and it's active. When we talk about the attributes of Scripture, we've got to remember that it's more than just a true book. It's more than just a a, a true book. Encyclopedias can be true. An autobiography can be true. Things can be true, but it's more than that. It is a living book. It's alive. It's breathing. It's active. It's where the pl- it's the place where God, the, the the God of this universe, meets you. And then he manifests himself unto you through that word. Now you say, Jeff, you're a word guy. I am a word guy. I I absolutely believe that God speaks through his word. That is the vessel that he has left us. That's why it says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will abide forever. It's not just his spoken word. It is the word of God that was given unto man. Now, I need you to, to get it down in your Spirit, that this is how God does. Now, the fourth thing is delighting ourselves in the Word of God. We are to delight ourselves in the Word of God. So, what is ama- what's amazing to me is that David takes the uh, this whole thing another step further. He he moves on than what we might expect. It's not just that he trusts it. It's not that he studies it. It's not that he uses the Word of God. He actually has affection for it. He he loves it. He delights it. He has a deep emotional connection, emotional affinity, affinity to God's word. He loves it. He he wants to hold on to it. He loves God. The Bible teaches us in Psalm 119, verse 159, that he loves God. You know that. I mean, verse 162, he rejoices in the word. He loves God's word. He rejoices in God's word. Verse 18, your word is wondrous, right? He's saying your word is wondrous. Um, Verse 72, I love what it says here. It said, it's better than the thousands of gold and silver pieces. And, and, And verse 103 says, it's sweeter than honey to my mouth. So, to my mouth. No, that's not my mouth. To my mouth. It's sweeter than honey to my mouth. He has a delight for God's word. I'm convinced that probably is the missing piece for a lot of people uh, that live the so-called Christian life today. For for a lot of people, the Bible is viewed almost as a, um, it's just something that we we get for, uh, we need to use it look at it, learn from historical things in it. It, it, It's literally, to a lot of folks, like taking your medicine. I got to get a little bit of the word of God this week and the pastor tells us or the the Bible study teacher says this and, and gives me the word of God. That's a sharp contrast to what David is talking about. David absolutely has a passion. He has a zeal and excitement for the law and the commands of God. And and the reason for this, it's not hard to find. David loves God's law, not because he's a uh, a closet legalist. <laughs> it's because he loves God and he wants to reflect the nature of God. So how do we get that understanding? The nature and the character of God is by studying the word of God. He loves God's law. He loves God's word. He loves God. And who God is, is what we are supposed to be like. We're not little gods. We're not little G's, regardless of what these crazy people have been teaching for years that we're little gods. We're absolutely not. God is sovereign. God is holy. And and, and we are to be holy as he is holy. And how do we get there? Not because of our little G status, because we have none. It's because of his big G status. He lives big in us and operates through his word. And we live out his word. You can say amen right there because that is amenable. If Is that a word? So any Christian who says they love God, but they despise the law. They're saying, well, we're under grace, not under the law. The law doesn't save you. The law doesn't give you a relationship with God. Your personal relationship with Jesus and what he did on the cross gives you access to God, right? But we show that we love God by the way that we live out his word, his word. He says to live, love the Lord your God with your heart, his, all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. We are to love God. How does God speak to us? His word. We are to love him and honor him by honoring his word. You can try to do away with the law of God all you want to, but it's still there. It's still there. And we are to un 
to live by every word. What are we to live by? By every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is what we're supposed to, to live by. So that is something that I need you to get in your spirit, that we need to have a delight for the word of God, not despise it and not get ticked off when the word doesn't say what we want it to say, or it says something that hurts your feelings. And a lot of people get mad at the pastor or the preacher or the evangelist when they preach something from God's word that hurts their feelings and they get ticked off and they say, well, I don't believe that. Well, the reality is if God's word says it, it doesn't matter who delivers it. It's from God's word. So the word of God is where we need to take up our issue. So if we love God, we will delight in his word. And the final thing that you need to do or we need to do with God's word is we need to obey it. I jumped a little ahead of myself just a second ago, but we need to obey it. The Having all, all those other four things in our life leads to this last one. If, if you have all of those other four active in your life, you will love to obey the word of God. David repeatedly expressed his desire to actually obey God's law, obey God's word. He wants to follow it. He had a desire to follow it. He had a desire to keep it. He had a desire to fulfill the word of God. So in our world today, the concept of obeying the word of God or obeying the law it is, it, honestly, it's not a popular opinion. It's not something, the concept that it's just not noble anymore. We don't want to follow the law. Many, many see the law of God, the word of God, all of the word of God, not just the Old Testament, the New Testament as well. A lot of people see the, the, the word of God is obsolete and they see that if we have to obey the word of God, what happens to grace? Well, grace is what gets us, to, is us into a relationship with God and not getting the punishment and the, 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 the reward that we deserve. He paid the penalty for us and now he's put us in a relationship with him. And the relationship is when, when you're in a relationship with somebody, you want to honor them. You want to love them. And what do you want to do? You want to treat them with regard. Well, he rescued us out of hell. So we should have a desire and affinity to obey the word of God. David is not just keeping the law. And let me say it this way. David's not keeping the law to earn his salvation. He's, he's obeying the law, obeying the word of God out of his love for God. So why should we obey the law? Why should we obey the word of God? It's because we love God. We obey him and obey the word because we love God. We should remember that Jesus himself was very uh, much about obeying the law. Before we get too quick to throw away the law. We've got to remember that Jesus, uh, according to the word of God, delighted in keeping the law, keeping the word of God, keeping it. And he was obeying the word of God out of love, but he wanted to keep the father's law. He wanted to keep the word. He kept it absolutely perfect for us. Be holy as I'm holy, right? Live as I've, I live. He obeyed God on our behalf and, and his righteous stature or status is, is imputed to us. How do we get righteousness? Well, it's not by our righteousness, according to the Bible, as filthy rags, but he imputes his righteousness to us by faith. It's crazy that we get saved by faith, but we won't trust and obey the word of God by faith. It's incredible to me. So Jesus, no doubt, embodies every one of these characteristics that I've given you tonight in, in, in the last few minutes. He trusted the word of God. He studied the word of God. He used the word of God. He delighted in the word of God and he obeyed the word of God. He did every one of these more than David did. And David did it to the best that he could, even with the bumps and bruises in his life. So folks, get in the word of God, study the word of God, obey the word of God, trust the word of God. Let's get in this thing, have an affinity for the word of God. Love it. Love it. Love the word of God. So let's get that down in our spirit. We love you so much. I cannot wait to see you on campus one of these days, 3867 Rainbow Drive, right here in Rainbow City First Church. Come on out and see us Sunday morning at 1030. We love you and pray that you have an amazing rest of the week.